Hello and welcome to Rushing the Field, a weekly national college football podcast from NBC Sports. He's Joshua Perry. I'm Nicole Auerbach. And JP, the thing I know about you is that you are not redshirting the rest of the season. I am not uh, not allowed to, nor would I want to. But we, I mean, we've got a crazy story to start this pot off. We do. We'll start with the ticket stub. This is our point of entry into this show. It is our news and notes segment, and there is a crazy story that happened overnight, Tuesday night into Wednesday. UNLV's starting quarterback, Matthew Sluka, announced on social media that he will redshirt and not play in any of the Rebels' remaining games this season. In the post on X, he said, I committed to UNLV based on certain representations that were made to me, which were not upheld after I enrolled. Despite discussions, it became clear that these commitments would not be fulfilled in the future. I wish my teammates the best of luck this season and hope for the continued success of the program. This is crazy, Joshua, because UNLV is 3-0. and They've got two wins over Big 12 teams. The first time they're 3-0 since 1984. They're actually a CFP contender this year. I know it's early, but all of that is very much true They've been a great story this season, like the turnaround of Barry Odom's program. And now all of a sudden, three games into the season, their starting quarterback is like, peace, I'm done over some NIL disputes. Yeah, um, I saw your uh, CFP prediction earlier this week. You had UNLV in there as a group of five representative, right? Yeah. And, yes, and so the, I did. I'm a little, the, a little nervous about well, that no, now. I mean, but like that's, that is the point of the gravity of this, right? Like it's not just a, a group of five team that was kind of, you know, just going to be wherever. Like they were in the mix to do some really important things um, in program history this year. And so that's crazy. The other thing is like the NIL doomsday people are going to take a victory lap off of this one because these are the situations that they talked about. Like, you know, a kid gets promised something, he doesn't get it. Now you've got to hold out. Um, this is like perfect storm with how the red shirt rule actually works where you can appear in up to four games and then say, listen, I'm not playing anymore and I'm going to keep my eligibility for another year. So this is one of the wild stories like that we probably could have gotten this year, but particularly because it is a group of five team that could have been a representative in the college football playoff. This is a huge deal. It is. So this is a Holy Cross transfer who comes to UNLV. So you've already made a big jump up. And then, you know, let's say somebody gets in your ear and is like, hey, if you redshirt, you could go even bigger next year. I mean, it's not hard to imagine all of this. And to me, without, you know, I'm sure we'll get a lot more information. I'm sure we'll get a lot of rumors and innuendos on all sides of this, because to your point, I I do think people are going to weaponize this as an example of NIL being being terrible or bad. Really, what this is, is a lack of employment contracts. Like, that's why this stuff is happening. To your point, you have a redshirt rule in place and a transfer portal. And yep. all of these, like the recruiting rules, NIL rules, transfer rules have all been challenged in court lately. So there's yep. very few rules around all of this, which sets it up for a situation like this without even knowing all the details, without knowing, hey, were you promised money you're not getting? Were you asking for more money? Were you looking around to see if you could get more money next year? Without knowing answers to any of that, we can just tell you it's because the system is set up this way. And you're not signing employment contracts, so you're not committing for a full year or multiple years at your school. Yeah, and and I'll say this too, just kind of as an aside on the NIL space for folks who aren't like super into it. Um, the the world is wild with how collectives operate and how uh, money is given out. Part of the reason why is sometimes they're promising money that's not actually there. Like they have to go raise the funds after they promise some money sometimes. And it could have just been a situation like that where, hey, we predicted we were going to have this. We don't have it, whatever the case is. I'm not going to speculate too hard on that. But the idea that uh, somebody would be asked to show up and do something and they were promised a certain amount of money and didn't get it. Like, I think we all could believe that is a reasonable thing. If it's something else, maybe this story does get a little bit wilder. But these are kind of some of the, the Wild West aspects of NIL where, like, to your point, when it's not a relationship between an employee and an employer. It's just kind of, hey, this is what we can do. This is what we're going to promise you. Not necessarily tied to what you're doing on the field. These are the situations that pop up that can be crazy. Yeah, and we have seen some lawsuits over exactly what you just described of being promised a certain amount of money and then that not being upheld. Uh, Jaden Rashada was a huge high-profile example of this. 
um, when he went to Arizona State to leave Florida and Miami was even pulled into all of that. So there's definitely examples of this. And sometimes we don't hear about them because like ongoing litigation. Um, but that's absolutely a factor in this world as well. So that is a crazy story with a true group of five playoff contender uh, that has to play this weekend. By the way, they're playing uh, Fresno State, which is a conference game. They would also yep. still need to win the Mountain West to get that CFP bid. Um, so Joshua, just before we get off this topic, like how does the rest of the team handle this and prepare for a game now? Man, this is a hard part because like, and I'll, I'll take my experience from being in the NFL. One thing you don't do is count other people's pockets. Like you never get involved in somebody else's negotiations. What their money is, it's not any of your business. Um, we also don't see situations where you get into the season and then guys disappear. Um, I, I would feel a way if I was a player in that locker room because of what I know we could do as a team. Um, he has been a big part of that. Like he's been a, a great addition running the football from the quarterback position for UNLV. So it is tough. Like, I don't, I don't know how you bounce back. And especially with the timing late in the week, we're finding this out maybe earlier in the week, there were kind of rumblings and they might've been preparing for this, but um, it puts you in a bad spot during game week to have your starting quarterback announce that, Hey, I'm just going to red shirt and I'm not going to be there for my team anymore. Yeah, so we will continue to see what happens at UNLV. Again, they've got a game this week, and we'll see how they respond. Um, and we'll see if we find out more information uh, as this story continues to evolve.